so um, today we have uh, with us Dr. Amber Wolf uh, Meleja. Welcome. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here and I'm excited about our exchange. I am too. Let's see what uh, we will be co-creating together. Yeah. So I guess uh, we could start if you could uh, maybe tell us a little about you, about the Lemurian Sisterhood. You are the creator and facilitator of the Lemurian Sisterhood. Mm -hmm. and also um, uh, Sacred Circles and Worldwide Sacred Circle Hosting Program. So okay. maybe we could start with that. One of my favorite subjects, of course. Uh -huh. um, and I have to say that these things that we'll be talking about today that have created what is my life now, um, it really has come along in a way that is a winding road <laughs> and so many things that are unexpected and you know I think along the way on our journeys we get hints and we get tips about what possibilities there are to open up to us but um, if someone had told me five years ago even just five years ago what I'd be doing today I would say no way and then I, you know, think back further, 10 or 15, I never, I never could have predicted it. I never was looking to create this specifically. Um, but I always knew, and I think we do, in, in the way of having little, um, little downloads, little messages, little whispers in our ear. I have always wanted to create circles for women. Mm -hmm. And as a practitioner, uh, and as a healing practitioner, I would do that once a year, twice a year. Uh, and that was before I met Lee Carroll and started producing things for him and then with him. Uh, but that would be it. I would just have one circle and they would be my patients and my friends and you know, we would have a nice day together and do yoga and meditation and um, journaling and, you know, things like that. But it wasn't really any more than that. And, and that went on for many years. And, and then my connection with Cryon grew and traveling with Lee Carroll. And once I had my Akashic Awakening in uh, 2011, then the Lemurian Sisterhood started to take form as that. Um, and even, even during my Akashic Awakening, I really had no idea um, what was happening and what it meant. And it wasn't until I talked to Lee Carroll about it uh, a month later uh, that he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to create a meeting for women when we were in Argentina on 11, 11, 11. And that was really the first meeting of the Lemurian Sisterhood. And so, you know, as I look back on it, the, my Akashic Awakening was on 9, 11, 11. And I talked to Lee about it on 10, 11, 11, which wasn't on purpose, it just happened. Spirit always has a plan. And then the meeting was 11, 11, 11. And it was joyous and beautiful and in Spanish, of course, <laughs> 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 which I had been to South America before that several times. So it wasn't um, completely out of the question for me to have a circle in another language, but I don't speak Spanish. So everything was translated and it was really just, I know now, guided by the star mothers. Yeah. But, you know, it's only in retrospect that I can see these things. So as I, you know, I traveled with Lee all of 2010 and all of 2011, so two full years of doing that and having women's circles and then on 11-11 having that, then in December, right after that, it became the Lemurian Sisterhood. Uh, and after that, 
that was what the meetings were called. And they happened every Saturday night on the weekends when I was with Lee in some city. And after about a year of that, women started to ask, well, you're not coming back for two years. What are we going to do? And, you know, that sort of stayed with me and I didn't have an answer for that. And along with that, in 2014, when I was hosting Lee in Colorado, I was having a Lemurian Sisterhood meeting that night. And he asked if I would like a cryon channel during the meeting. And of course I said yes. Um, it was never anything I would have thought of or asked him. It, had, it came from somewhere else. And that was the night that he really gave some history about what I was doing and what my name was. That's when Cryon revealed that my name during my life in Lemuria, my very long life in Lemuria was Meleha, and that I was the last priestess in Lemuria before really that everyone had scattered because we'd gone from living on that big continent mm -hmm. and lots of people to the islands, the much smaller islands. And we had scattered, but I stayed and lived out my life on Kauai, which interestingly enough, when I was, I think 26, I went to Hawaii for the first time and I went right from the airport to Kauai or the, the airport in Honolulu to Kauai. I don't know why, or though I do know why. Mm -hmm. So even that many years ago, there was a, there were, mm -hmm. yeah, there were pieces being put together for this. So as, so the channel started on that night in 2014 and kept going and kept going and kept going every meeting. Um, we just did one on Saturday when we did our live event. And so those that were all posted on my website and they were linked to from the crime website. And in 2017, I created the worldwide sacred circles because there had been three years of my traveling and doing those meetings and people asking, when will we have another way to be with you? <clears throat> well, at that time in 2017, nobody was really doing online meetings. You know, it was mm -hmm. just really just a, a concept that happened like in an office. So I wasn't, everything was live, but I started the program Worldwide Sacred Circles and women from all over the world responded and still respond. Um, I have a beautiful, I think I have 23 hosts all over the world and um, it's a beautiful organization and now, so it's all online right now. Most of the women have their sacred circles in person uh, until March, uh, this past March, and now everything's online and, you know, everyone's planning to go back to uh, meeting in person, but also doing more events online. Um, there are women um, from Italy that only do their circles online, my host there, Julia, and of course they're in Italian, so that when I have an event that I stream from the U.S., it goes through Italy with translation and it also goes through South America where I have six hosts in South America wow. all a beautiful community of women so that's how that part started all right so for the ones that uh, don't know about Lemurian and Cryon uh, maybe you could give us um, yeah that's a little of your wisdom with that. Yeah. You know, I found Cryon in 1989 when I moved to Boulder, Colorado. I just got divorced. I was a single mom and I was turning 40 all at the same time and um, really looking for a new direction. And I was looking at a lot of different metaphysical things. Boulder, Colorado is really a transformational place. And so I just happened to find the cryon book one the one that fell on my feet yeah the one that fell on my foot <laughs> <laughs> it's on me. Yes. that's how these things happen they find us when we're ready 
you know, knock and the door will be opened. Uh, and then um, 10 years later, I met my beloved Sid Wolf, who had moved to Colorado with his family from San Diego and knew Lee. So once I met Sid, I made the personal connection with Lee, and then things really started to happen. So my, my finding the cryon work was, you know, slowly over those 10 years mm -hmm. as, and Lee was of course not traveling. He was just doing little things in California, little at home things. And um, then he came to Colorado and New Mexico and um, I got connected with him and I began to produce his events in the beginning of um, 2003. And so what really, um, I, I'm from a Catholic background, let me say that. And I was, you know, I did not go to Catholic school, but I was raised going to church and church school, catechism classes and had all the things. And most of it as a feminist, as a budding young feminist really turned me off because it was about guilt and shame and, you know, keeping the women in the background or at the bottom. And I, when I was 15, I stopped going to church. And um, then I really was a, sort of against organized religion of any kind, though I was still searching, still seeking. And when I found the Cryon teachings in the first book, uh, Cryon says that he, we'll call Cryon he, um, honors the human for taking on the experience of living on earth. Because we all know it's not simple and it's not easy, it's challenging. So that kind of Resonates. feeling of being honored was something that really I had never experienced. Mm. Uh, and certainly not spiritually. So that got my attention. That was the beginning of my wanting to know more from this guy. Mm -hmm. And so it was, as I read the books in those next 10 years, you know, I still went to Buddhist things and I still walked in the labyrinths. And mostly uh, for me, um, the connection to spirit came in nature. It always had. Uh, you know, as a young girl, and then uh, in my 20s when I lived in Alaska, and then I lived in the high desert in New Mexico, and then Colorado. So nature was very strong for me, the Gaia connection. Um, and I could feel that through the Cryon teachings. I could feel the honoring of the earth mm. and the honoring of the human on the earth. And then saying, and this for me would have been blasphemy, Cryon saying that there is a peace of God in each one of us. Those were the early teachings. And that was shocking. A peace of God in me? Oh my, wow. Couldn't be, couldn't be. Um, but now what we say is we are the creator, right? We work with source energy that's inside of us and outside of us. So in those 20 years, a lot has happened in how we look at us and spirit. So I, I really didn't want to get into an organized religion um, with the Cryon teachings, and I still don't. Cryon isn't that. Cryon is a loving, angelic being that honors and loves humanity. And the messages, if you listen to any of the messages randomly, You'll hear that in every single one of the messages. Mm -hmm. So it's always easy for me to, I lead the meditations before a lot of the channels. And that's always easy for me because I can feel that energy from Cryon getting ready to come in and honor the human by bringing this message of lifting us up or answering questions or giving us a look at how the beings on what Cryon calls the other side of the veil out of human form, how they see us and how they see our struggles and how they see our lights come on and how they encourage us to turn our lights on. 
So talking about meditations, um, I just wanted to mention before we move to the next uh, questions that I would like to ask you. You are going to be offering at the end of this interview. Yeah. Um, what is called a shape shifting in modern life is that kind of like a meditation, right? Like a guided. It's, yes, it's like a meditation. It's maybe I would call it a journey. A journey. So we are going to be experiencing that journey. Yes. Uh, by the end of this interview, and you are also offering to our audience a healing wave meditation and a spiritual yes. healing legacy, right? Yes, those are two MP3 downloads that you have the special link to offer to our listeners uh, that they're on my website. Uh, Healing Wave Meditations is three different meditations, uh, five minute, 10 minute, and 20 minute, depending on what you have time or inclination for. Mm -hmm. And Spiritual Healing Legacy is, is a special healing practice to bring in the energy of the universe and into the chalice of our heart and send it into our chakras mm, how wonderful wow. that's really quite beautiful how beautiful is that oh excited to see yeah. to, to them. we will be posting all the information down with the interview so and um, where uh, the audience can go and and find all this wonderful information Another question. Uh, you went through uh, what we would call a near-death experience. Ah, uh, yes. Right? I believe that was, when was that? When 1993? Yes. And the Akashic awakening that you were mentioning before. You so, that? yeah. Mm -hmm. The near-death experience was a car accident. Um, and I was driving between uh, Colorado and New Mexico and it was a beautiful day and I was on a road without any traffic except this one guy going really slow in front of me and I pulled out to pass him and there was no other traffic coming of course and right when I was in his blind spot he made a left-hand turn so I slammed into his car I was going about 60 miles an hour and uh, I hit my head really hard on the windshield. It, that was before airbags were a thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt myself leave my body and I felt the lights, the light around me. Uh, that's all I can say is that I was lifted up to this place of light and I could feel my fear. My son was in the car with me. Um, he was, was, his seat was reclined and he was belted down asleep during all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, he was young and I didn't want more than anything. I didn't want anything to happen to me that would take me away from being his mom. So in that place of light, I feel like the guardian angels or the light beings or source energy said to me, you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You're going to be all right. And then the next thing I know, I could hear the gravel under my tires as I pulled my car off the road. Oh, wow. But in that time, I was in the light. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and it was all right. I mean, it was really miraculous, really miraculous. And, you know, my body was injured. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but it could have been so much worse. I mean, the car never rolled over. Uh, I didn't break a glass with my head. Um, my son was fine. I was going to ask him like he, he was okay with the whole. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it took me three years of healing recovery. Um, and during that time, I, I had a lot of treatments. During that time, I, the angels or source energy um, would come to me from time to time because I'd get worried. You know, am I going to be like this forever? And they would say those same things. It's going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Mm. Really going to be okay. And what happened during, you know, the, after the first year when I was back to work was I was a cranial sacral therapist and they started to come to me and, and really talk to me about what was going on with my patients. So that awareness got opened up 
from a place of my not knowing anything about that. Mm -hmm. So you were already tapping into that kind of other realms. Yes, yes, I was. I was, you know, I had a full practice, you know, lots of patients. Um, and it was, you know, again, as I look back on that, or even then when I looked back at just before the accident, it really took my ability to be in that place of receiving from the patient's body and guides uh, the messages that would help them heal. Mm. Do you think at that point the Lemurian had something to do with it or is he talking about some kind of different kind of energy? You know, I would say that they've always had something to do with whatever I've been doing with my life. It seems to me now that all of the years of my life have been guided by that unseen force, but also by my Akashic promise to humanity, who I was going to be in this life to be of service. And that is what everything in my life was built on, one thing on the other on the other. Yeah. And that I was always looking for things spiritually, that I always was putting my hands on people, that I could, I could hear my intuition, whether or not I chose to listen to it or not. I was pretty trained out of listening to it uh, and trained into, you know, the American woman wife mm -hmm. uh, and Catholic. So I see it all now as guided and also that my free will was always in place. I always, always had a choice as to whether or not I wanted to take from these lessons what was being offered. And my feeling really is that as we have experiences and hopefully grow from them, whatever the experience is, that we gain some wisdom. And that helps us make a next choice. Mm -hmm. And we learn from that and we grow from that. And that wisdom helps us make the next choice and the next choice. So in the beginning, you know, when I was 16, I didn't have much wisdom. <laughs> and then in my 20s, you know, hopefully I had a little more, but not what I had in my 30s, 40s, 50s, and so on. So to get to where I am now, I really have always felt, as I look back, that there were so many things guiding me. I had other experiences where I could have lived or died. Um, certainly when I was in the Alaskan wilderness, I had a couple of experiences that it was, could have gone either way. Mm -hmm. And something always kept me alive. And so whether that was the hand of the star mothers and my own wisdom or other just things that happen to um, correct my course. Mm -hmm. um, I've written about a lot of that because I, want, I don't want to ever forget it. I don't know if it'll ever be a book, mm -hmm. but um, I really believe that we all have that. We all have a guiding force or hand or voice that if we listen, the more we listen, the more we tap into that rich source of our own guidance and our own reason for being here. Because I think we've all chosen to be here for a purpose. Mm, I think, you know, I, I completely agree with everything that you're saying. Sometimes can be challenging just trusting it when we cannot see it and also surrendering to the process and not even having any answers and, and accepting it yeah. so, and allowing ourselves to be guided by it. Yeah. And we feel we have to make things happen. Yeah. yeah. And that's programming as a human, all yeah. of us. You uh -huh. know, there are very few people that are not programmed like that from birth. Yeah. Now with mind and ego jump into the whole uh, scene. Could you tell us a little more about the Star Mothers? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, with your last question about did I feel that the Lemurians have always been guiding me, 
I feel that about the star mothers now as the parents of the Lemurians, mm -hmm. uh, that um, in the book, The Women of Lemuria, well, let me preface this a little by saying, all those years of cryon channels, there were about 50 okay. between 2014 and 2018, uh, and, and the record of my Akashic awakening that began all of that, all of those plus the cryon uh, wisdom were put together in a book called The Women of Lemuria, mm -hmm. and that was edited into its form by Monica Morani, who is the life partner of Lee Carroll and who I also know that you've interviewed, mm -hmm. uh, my dear goddess sister. We lived together for three years in Colorado, and right, that's right when all this was happening, and the, she offered to create the book. So that book was part of, it's the history of Lemuria and the Pleiadian star mother's intervention in who we were and who we became after they came. And then of course, of what happened with me when I was there and Dr. Todd Yai and Kahuna Kale. And there are new, uh, new information from Kryon in the book. And it's also, um, it really gives people a look at who the star mothers are slash were. Um, so for me, they are timeless beings, formless and timeless. They were in form to be a part of humanity's awakening in Lemuria. And now they are, as far as I know, formless. I don't know. I think some people see them. Um, I hear them. Uh, and they give different uh, ways of connecting to different people. Some people uh, hear music from the stars or light language. Uh, some people have art that they channel from the star mothers. You know, that constellation is the closest star cluster to Earth at 444 light years from us. Mm -hmm. And it's in the constellation of Taurus. And this may be just a coincidence because I'm not the only Taurus on the earth, but I'm a double Taurus. Okay. So when I found that out, I went, wow, that's pretty interesting, <laughs> just as a little interesting thing. But I feel like they are always with me. And through them and with Cryon's live help, um, the creation of things like the Lemurian Sisterhood, and the book, The um, Women of Lemuria, and the Lemurian Codes for Activation, which was another sacred assignment that they gave me, and the CD, The Women of Lemuria, which are the sacred songs that we sang when we were around the circles, or around the fire, around the crystal of Lemuria. Um, so those, all of that has come from them through me. The Lemurian codes are a set of 11 cards that are used to reawaken the uh, messages that's stored in our DNA. And you read them and put them on your body. They're messages from the star mothers to reawaken that hibernating information. So I know that they're still around because that is all on them and everything they bring. And they give me more information all the time. It hasn't stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, sometimes I think it has stopped. Um, the, as example, with the Lemurian codes, the cards, um, I have some right here, I think, in my desk, yeah. Um, they gave four activations with these and then nothing for a year and a half. So here's how they look. They have this beautiful art on the front of them. And then on the back, they have the instructions. And you read it and you lay it on your star centers, what they call star centers. We call them chakras. Um, and then just this past March, the equinox, they, uh, told me I needed to build a portal to the star mothers as part of the global consciousness reset. 
So I said, okay. And I used these cards to build a circle. And I did this live and it all was coming in the moment they were instructing me what to do. So I put the 11 cards in a circle. Then I brought six items that represented earth, wind, fire, water, culture, and source. And that was given by Cryon, those six things. And that's part of the shamanic teaching wheel, which is the mother. Yeah. <laughs> so that, um, that portal, that circle, uh, I, and then I read the cards and this was done on a Facebook Live. It's now a video on my Lemurian Sisterhood global page. They, then they said, you need to do this for three days. And I said, oh, okay. Because <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be for three days, but I said, okay. And so I did it the next day, and you know, on live stream again. And then on the third day, they told me that this was the fifth activation with these cards. And they invited everyone to do it with me every month on Facebook Live. I said, oh, all right. <laughs> so another sacred assignment. And that's what I call these um, lessons or whatever this is that the Star Mothers give me. And sometimes it's quite spontaneous like that was. So now every month on Facebook Live, I do this new moon portal to the star mothers and people all over the planet are doing it at the same time they send me pictures of these beautiful mandalas that they make so that is to help the global consciousness reset and it is a part of what they're doing for us and they're doing it wow. through me mm -hmm. they're doing it through many other people so yeah so they're still here very busy <laughs> Keeping me very busy. <laughs> so when you talk about the global consciousness reset, right? And you go through these monthly meetings. Yeah. What, you, what, what is the feedback that you are getting from the people? Like what is the... Uh, the feedback that I get? Well, yeah. The first thing is that people all over the world are doing it at the same time. And I've also told people, if they don't have these cards, just make a piece of paper and write one through 11 on the cards and then on the paper. And then on the other side, write Lemurian activation code. And so they have. Mm -hmm. And I read the cards. And then, of course, it's translated into Spanish and um, Italian simultaneously. And then later, it's translated into other languages. So what the, what the feedback is, is that people are feeling this connection. We are connected by this one thing. Mm -hmm. We're connected by so many things. Mm -hmm. But it's very intentional and you know some people say they've they started doing it in a place where they can leave it up until the next new moon and then they clear everything away in a ceremony and then we start again and so not everyone can do that mine's on my dining room table so i leave it up for a few days and then i take it down um, but it's become a ceremony that is happening all over the world at the same time and so once I've read the cards and placed all the objects, then I channel what the star mothers have to say about this particular new moon in this particular month. They had, they had me start uh, in January doing something with the full moon called Lemurian Lunation. Mm. And it's all about the full moon of that month. Well, I started, um, they told me to do it on the equinox in December, 2019. They said, when the full moon comes in uh, January 2020, here's what we want you to do. Mm -hmm. Because in Lemuria, we didn't tell time by the flocks and, you know, calendars. We had the sun and the moon and the stars. Yeah. And so here's a way to, in modern times, get connected. I mean, the moon's just been hanging out there all this time and we look at it. Maybe we sing songs about it or we have a bonfire but to really work with the lunar energy, especially women, 
because that's us. We are the moon. And the water of the planet is all moved by the moon. Mm -hmm. So it's a very deep connection that people are feeling. So there's the new moon one and the full moon one now. Um, so I started the, the new moon happened to be on the equinox in March. So that's the kind of synchronicity that the star mother set up for me is and then i thought i would just do it one day once and then they said no nope, you need to do it for 11 new moons 11 more new moons and <clears throat> i think this year we have 13 full moons and 12 new moons so i'll be doing it through the whole rest of the year every month this year it's uh this month uh, may is on the 22nd Yo. And I already did the full moon, uh, that Scorpio full moon. Yeah. yeah. A couple of days ago. How do you communicate with them? Do you communicate through uh, light language or is more kind of like a knowing or is more through you No, know, it's a very interesting thing and I and that's such a good question because it's so different for everyone. And I really want to make that a point is that we are all unique. If someone's looking at the two of us right here, they see how different we are. And that's how unique we are also. And what we have in common are we're both women. And we're both breathing. <laughs> and we may have a few other things in common, but we are mostly unique mm -hmm. in our gifts. And so what comes through me and how it comes through me is going to be completely different or it may have a little overlap um you know like lee channels with his eyes closed and he's completely conscious all the time mm -hmm. i also channel with my eyes closed although i can open them uh i find that it's distracting so i keep them closed yeah um, Lee sees so much light that he loses his train of thought. Um, so yes, I get distracted. Mm -hmm. um, there are other channelers that keep their eyes open. They walk around. They, you know, they can have a conversation. Uh, um, Abraham Hicks, she stands up on stage with her eyes open and has a dialogue with people. So for me, um, there are different things that happen. It's mostly when, well, it's always, let me say always, when I'm not thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So when I was doing the Global Consciousness Reset, Portal to the Star Mothers, I was just really focused on what I was doing. Wasn't thinking about, you know, I wonder how long this will take, or, you know, mostly I wanted to make sure that people could see what I was doing. Um, and so when the message came through that I was to do this for three days, I was like, oh, okay. And that was when I was channeling the star mothers. I had no idea. And, you know, the, it was the same, um, week before last, I was listening to Cryon or Lee. I was listening to Lee give his presentation. We had a live stream, um, and I, it, was, it was his turn and I was waiting. And so I was listening and, and I started to make notes. He was talking about our 24th uh, chromosome and our multidimensional DNA. And I got the download from the Star Mothers right then. And I started writing notes about, and I could hear he was still talking, but I wasn't hearing. I was getting that download. So. You know, I wasn't thinking in the moment about, geez, I wish I'd get another download from the Star Mothers. <laughs> I, was, I was focused on something but wasn't thinking. Mm -hmm. so my mind was distracted so the portal could be open for them to come through. Yeah. And the same thing last week um, was, I think it was Friday, and I was, um, we had had our sound check and our camera check and all that. And I, after that, I just went and sat in my uh, living room and I was gonna go back to work. And 
suddenly I heard, and I thought it was my own voice, say, you know, you have to really be a shapeshifter to do this work. You're on camera, and then you get to relax, and then you're back, and then you get to relax. And then all this information came through, which I will talk about more, uh, about shapeshifting. So that's how it works for me. Light language, not, not so much. And I think it's probably because I don't have that kind of artistic talent. I have a very rich visual world inside, but it doesn't come out of my hands. Mm -hmm. My handwriting is really nice, but not my drawing at all. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, I, I can sing, but it, so, but toning from the star mothers has not come through me. So, it's different for everyone and I love seeing all the ways that people bring this cosmic energy through and how unique it is for even you know there are a lot of people who write light language and it's all unique yeah it's what you were talking a few minutes ago the uniqueness of everyone and we are experiencing all these ways of being and sourcing in the way that our body and and our heart is capable. Um, and I think that's something that we can't, um, we can't say enough about, because mm -hmm. we've been trained to try to be the same. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to look the same and smell the same and dress the same and same best schools. And, yeah. you know, we have a very deep program of how to fit into the sameness. And as we leave that behind, we can really discover our true purpose, yeah. what we're here to do. Mm -hmm. mm, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Um, I think we are coming to a point that maybe we should start with the, um, with the safe shifting. We can always find lots of things to talk about, can't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's do a second one. <laughs> so much. So much to tap into it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so um, what the Star Mothers told me, uh, and then we'll do a little meditation and then a journey, is that uh, part of who we are as human beings is we physically shapeshift our lives, right? We're born in this tiny little helpless thing, and then you know, we learn to walk and talk, and then we have puberty, um, you know, and then whatever we, you know, bec maybe become parents or not. But as women, our bodies continue to morph and change and recreate human life. That's a shape shift, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and even if you haven't had a child, you also still have all the equipment for creativity, mm -hmm. and that shifts something inside of you. So, what the star mothers want us to know from this is that it's a beautiful process to be honored and it's also again very unique to each person and that when we look at that uh, and look at our lives as as a series of moments of shifting in between things then we can see a whole lot more of who we are. I think we just walk through our lives and we do this and we do that and we don't really, I mean, we don't do ceremonies every time we're going to do some, you know, go wash the dishes or make dinner or, um, you know, get on the computer. We don't stop and say, okay, now I'm going to shift into business mode. We don't do that. We just do it. And I wonder how life would be for us if we stopped and took a breath and said, oh, okay, now I'm going to shift into business mode. And then when we're done, say, oh, okay, that was great. Or I've got to get back to that later. But right now I need to shift into cooking mode or shopping mode or walking outside mode or yoga mode. It's all a part of being present in the moment. Okay. So the star mothers are saying, be quiet. <laughs> so I will ask, 
whoever is present, whoever is listening, watching, and just gently close your eyes. And as you do, begin breathing a little more deeply and more slowly. And you can count, if you like, on the inhale and exhale, count to five or six, just to slow your breath down and become more aware of this moment without thinking, without needing to know what's next and being here with me, with the star mothers. Relaxing your body and allowing the breath in and out and inviting an opening into perhaps a new place of awareness where you can receive, where you can be honored and when you can, where you can be loved. Take another breath. Dear Shining Ones, we come to you from the divine source of all love. This is a creation outside of you and inside of you. How can that be, you might ask? How do the star mothers know this? Who are they? What are they? So we open by telling you that we are your Pleiadian parents and we ask our Meleha to use the word we because we are a collective of not only Pleiadian parents, but source energy. This is something that is limitless and becomes something that Meliha can translate in this moment for us because we give her little sound bites to give to you. So we ask you now to take another breath. And as we guide you through this small journey, know that more than your ears are listening, more than your mind is perceiving, more than your brain is cognizing, every cell of your physical body is also listening. And the field of energy around your body, including your multidimensional chromosome, is feeling the vibration. The more you can say yes to that and allow it by just relaxing, the more that can take place. This is very exciting. So we ask you to not lean into this, but lean back so that you can receive on a level that perhaps you haven't. Allow your perception to open like a camera lens and let it just stay open and relaxed. We wish to guide you into this metaphor we will call shape shifting. Now as Lemurians, when the Pleiadians came to you, we were there on purpose. We were there to bring divinity to humanity. And you were humans that were saying yes. Today, we do the same. We are Pleiadians, bringing to you, Lemurians, divinity. But you have had many lives, many times since Lemuria. Your mind is much more sophisticated. And so are all your processes. 
in that sophistication, some things have been left. Not lost, just left for the time being. And one of those is the miracle of shape-shifting. Now, there are also many other miracles. We call them miracles because they're very exciting to us for you. The miracle of intuition and telepathy and entanglement. We will speak about those another time. Today, we speak to you about this metaphorical concept of shape shifting. And as our beloved Meleha said, you do shape shift your human form throughout your life. Now that seems like, of course, it's automatic, but it's not. You all, each one, have some control over that by what you eat, if you exercise or not, the amount of stress that you are taking on, or perhaps the amount of meditation that you do. So shape-shifting is always up to you, especially when you be conscious about it. What does that mean to be conscious about it? It means that you are in charge of your awareness. This is free will. And as things seem to happen to you, you have gotten maybe a little lazy about your free will. And we're not saying that you need to be vigilant in every moment. But the more you connect with the power of your own free will, the more you will have that present ability to shift. Meleha gave you a little hint. So we will take you a little deeper with this. We ask you to bring your awareness to the point between your eyes, your third eye or your sixth star center. and gently focus there and notice that point of light. And then from that point of light, we ask you to create a filament of light going deep into your brain, to your pineal gland, and just let them say hello to each other. Imagine that you are connecting the point of light that is source energy and the point of light that is a place where your soul resides, but also your free will. And let those two points just touch ever so gently. You may feel a sensation you may experience a tingling or perhaps some pulsation. And take a breath. And then keeping that filament intact from your sixth star center to your pineal gland. Imagine there is another point of light above your head, your seventh star center, right above the crown of your head. And you can see it there just as a light or a star, or maybe even a galaxy <laughs> or a sun. And then extend that filament of light that's attached to your pineal gland. Extend that up to your point of light above your head. 
and connect it. And then bring another filament down from that point above your head into your sixth star center, your third eye. And feel the profoundness of having this triangular shape connecting these points. This is where your consciousness of your own will lives, your will to be aware, your will to be a dancing shapeshifter in life. These three points connect. And we ask you this, if you would like, we invite you, let us say, to each day take some time to make this link up of these three places. Begin with the point on your brow, then create a filament to your pineal and anchor it there, and then another filament to the point of light above your crown and anchor it there, and then back down to the point of light between your eyes. This connects you to divine mind. This connects you to your free will as well. So you have these two seemingly dichotomous energies, but here they come together. Here, they become one with you. And from doing this daily, you become a much more conscious and joyful shape shifter in your own life. You only need to hold this awareness of this beautiful cosmic light triangle for a minute or so. But start your day like that. And keep that awareness with you every now and then throughout your day. We give you this information because we know those who are listening here are of the graduate level of humanity or you wouldn't be listening to these beautiful programs. Now we ask you to gently take a breath. And as you exhale, see all of your light triangle just softly dissolving like a fog in the sunshine. And take another inhale. And as you exhale, allow the rest to dissolve. And perhaps you're feeling some sensations in your head. <sighs> Take another breath. And then move your neck around a little bit, just relaxing your shoulders, lifting them up and down. Another big breath in and out. Begin to bring your awareness shifting back to your physical body in the present. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes, opening your third eye also and just feeling the blessings of the star mothers as they step back. They're always with us, always blessing us, always taking care of us. We are their children. <sighs> wow, thank you. <laughs> that was beautiful. It is always my honor. That's a gift.
So um, I would have one million other questions to ask you, but I think this is a good spot to yeah. finish. Another time. Mm -hmm. This co-creation. Uh, thank you again for your wisdom, the work that you are doing in the world, mm, taking the time and be part of, of this co-creation. And thank you, Goddess, for creating this beautiful way for all of us. We're creating a sacred circle together, a streaming sacred circle. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it's my honor and my pleasure to be your guest. And I send out my love to all of my brothers and sisters of light, our family of light. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you. To be continued. Thank to you. be continued, indeed. Thank you.